through your chest as you come through. Um, and if you're doing it right and your setup's right, it shouldn't make your butt come off. If your setup is off a little bit and you use light drive, you'll notice your butt will just fly off the bench. Uh, your butt. You really want to be wrapping your lower thigh area and your glute around the bench if you're arching like that. So uh, don't squeeze your butt. Squeezing your butt isn't useful. Like I know people say that, but if you want to be tight, squeezing your butt's just going to make your hips go up that way. So don't squeeze your butt. Squeeze your quads and push your knees away from each other, and that's going to set your hips and your lower body better than squeezing your butt. And your arms. So when you unrack, obviously you don't want to be kind of soft unrack like that. You're pressing like this. Because you, you won't get a start commanding competition if you have soft elbows. Um, you should be completely vertical above your shoulder. So if you start and the bar is like above where your shoulder line is, you, you'll, you're going to have a bad time. Or if you're too below. Like you can tell if you wobble the bar up and down, you'll find a center point exactly above your shoulder where it's balanced. So when you bring the bar down, <laughs> during your descent, it's going to, depending on how wide your grip is, the angle of your elbows will, your elbow will always stay below the bar. So if you're close, it'll be kind of like that. If you're wide, it'll be more like that. So the angle will change. All you need to look for is having your elbow below the bar. Uh, so arching. Arching is safer than benching with a flat back. Don't listen to anyone that says otherwise. There's a wrong thing they don't know what they're talking about. Yep, so arching will put your shoulder at a better angle. So as opposed to like this, if you lift your chest up like just by yourself doing this, and you press like that, and it's going to put your sh shoulder and your pressing muscles at a more optimal angle because your chest muscles are going this way. And you lift up. It just works better. Um, shortens the range of motion if you lift your chest up, obviously. Uh, provides more stability between your shoulder and hips because if you're completely flat and you don't have any leg drive, you're like here, your like shoulders down are too like wobbly. So if you set up your shoulders and your hips in an arch, you will be more stable no matter what. And not everyone can arch aggressively. Like if you are setting up tight enough, you will be arching to an extent, but you don't have to be like Ken with your head on the bench. Uh, that's optional if you want to look cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's something that if you want to work on it, you can work on it. It will, it won't necessarily make you bench more, but over time, it'll shorten your range of motion. Uh, so producing tightness. It basically comes down to your quads and your lats. So setting your, when you set up your shoulders, into the back of the pad, and then you set your feet and you set your butt, and you like get your quads tight, and your lats tight. You won't be able to move. You can have someone like push, like push on your leg or push on your arms, and you won't be able to move in this position because if you're loose and you have someone push on your legs or your arms, you'll kind of tip over, or you'll be able to push their knee in. That's how you know they're not tight enough. Um, so with your hands. A few cues are either pull the bar apart like that, and that's going to retract your shoulders and keep more of your back locked in. Or optionally, you can think about squeezing your pinkies and pressing your thumbs into the bar, and that's going to lift your chest and retract kind of in the same way. Uh, whichever works for you will be fine. Uh, yeah, so right before you start your uh, descent, take a deep breath and lift your chest. So that's kind of the same motion, so if you breathe in, it's going to do that, and then you press. So yeah. Uh, so the, the sense of touch, uh, touch point is going to be lower than your start position. So you won't be pressing straight down like that, because that's going to force your uh, arm to be at a 90 degree angle. So you want to be pressing kind of down at an angle. This is uh, from Greg Knuckles. Uh, so he's going down and then he's touching a few inches lower than where his shoulder is. 
And that's what you're looking for. So you'll know you're at the right point where you imagine resting your tricep on your lat. You, like even if you don't have big lats, just imagine kind of setting them back like this, and uh, you'll end up in the right spot. So when you touch, don't deflate your chest. A lot of people end up if it's heavy, they'll kind of sink. If you sink, your shoulder's going to roll forward, and you're going to lose the pop off your chest when you press. So do not sink. Uh, so pressing, the biggest biggest takeaway if you want to learn anything is press back towards your face. It is like the one thing that is going to fix your bench, if, like if you're stuck or anything. Because uh, pressing directly away from you isn't going to work. If you have a sticking point like this far away from your chest, odds are you're pressing straight away from yourself. So press back towards your face as soon as you come off, and then it's going to straighten out at the top. And you're just going to return to your start position right over your shoulder. And when you press, you don't want to be losing tightness. So you don't want to be collapsing forward with your chest. You don't want to be moving your feet around. And you don't want to be breathing out. So if, you, if you're going for a run rep max and you breathe out, as, as you breathe out, you're slowly sink, like <coughs> reducing your chest lift. <coughs> so don't breathe out because that's going to lose tightness. You want to be as tight as possible. So common technical errors, uh, your butt comes off the bench. So you either work tight enough in the starting position or uh, your knee is above where your glute is. So if your glute is higher, if your knee is higher than your glute and you flex forward, it's going to lift your butt up. So that's uh, going back to where your feet are. The, low, the farther back your foot is, the lower your knee is. So the, that's going to prevent your butt from coming off, usually. Uh, another problem is happy feet. You've probably seen this uh, in the gym. Some uh, Someone less experienced is being challenged by a bench, and they, their immediate response is to do this with their feet. It's wrong. Please don't do that. You want your feet glued to the ground, basically. Um, and if you have a habit of like angling your foot inwards or sliding them or uh, lifting them up, just think about even pressure at the beginning and then like with your heel and the front of your foot, even pressure down and then forward. So you should be pressing towards the front of your shoe with your whole foot and not just your like not necessarily just your, the front of your toe at an angle, you want your whole foot. So that you should prevent you from uh, moving your feet around and losing energy that way. Another problem is elbow scoop. That is when you touch and your elbows do that. So it's uh, your, odds are your back isn't tight enough or you're not strong enough to hold that position. So if you're pressing and you do that, like you will, like at low weight, you will be strong enough to just scoop it back and press. But a heavy weight, you're going to end up here. Your elbows are going to flare behind the bar, and you just won't be able to press it. So um, be aware of that. Punching up is another error that I see all the time. It is when you're pressing and it's heavy and you're like trying to get it up, and you end up raising your shoulders like this, either on one side or both sides. So that's odds are your lats aren't tight enough because your lats are going to keep your shoulder down. And if you end up kind of all lopsided like that, it's going to make the press way harder. Um, and if your leg drive isn't enough, having your shoulder blades attached to the pad and pressing away is going to keep your shoulder down like that. So just think about leg drive and keeping your shoulder blades locked in, and that's going to prevent that or that or that. Uh, and weight resting on the wrists, not not, not lined up with the forearm. For like example, if the weight's here and your line of weight is here, not above your wrist or your uh, elbow, that's going to put a lot of strain on your wrist, and it won't necessarily help, like it'll make you bench less, and you'll hurt yourself eventually, or you'll be sore. So if you get the bar into your webbing right here, it's going to be pretty close to your wrist joint, 
and that's going to be directly above your elbow joint too. Just what you want. You want your joints stacked above each other in a straight line when you press. So yeah. Uh, so those are all your starting position with common technical wires. So how do I improve my bench? Assuming you can bench reasonably well and your numbers aren't going up well, what do you do? Easy answer, I'm sure if you like Google it and everyone says bench more or do it more. Uh, but not really good because I do it. So increase your total volume by either increasing your reps and sets or increasing your weekly frequency. Use variations that punish technical errors. For example, three count pause bench, tempo bench, uh, Larson press, uh, plus grip bench, or uh, other goofy variations. Uh, and use assistance movements that bring up your weak muscles. For example, if you have really strong arms, like really big triceps, and a really weak front delt, you're going to have a bad time. Like, you just won't be able to press it. it like, that takes kind of trial and error to try to figure out where you're weak at. Uh, so, go to bench more, obviously get bigger. If you want to lift anything more, you got to eat, you got to have more muscle to press more weight. And that's true for any lift. And then be patient. Uh, bench won't go up as fast as your squat or your deadlift. Like pound for like by pound, but percentage-wise, like if you bench 275 and you deadlift 500, if your bench goes up 10 pounds, the equivalent would be 20 pounds on your deadlift. So don't be like, oh, my deadlift went up 30 pounds, but my bench only went up 10. But still, like percentage-wise, you still made similar progress. So don't feel bad. So yeah. Uh, Q and A time. Those good questions. Learn big notes. Yay. Okay, can you go back to the one about if you're wider internally rotating? Is that something you actively do or something that should happen uh, uh, before is that? This the right one? Butt legs, Wrists. shoulders, wrists, yeah. hands, yeah. arms? With, with. Okay. Yeah. What's that? About internally rotating. Yeah, the wider your prepares and more hands How do you uh how do you compromise that with the fact that you also want to be squeezing your How do you combine those together? Um, your internal rotation angle is going to be determined by here, where it should be, your first point of contact should be here, no matter what. And wherever you land on the opposite end of your palm is your angle. So it's more about placement? Yeah. Okay. So, so it would be... The difference would be here, like if I would compress with open palms, or out here. Because oh, either, like, if, when you close your hand, when it's completely straight, if, imagine if I was holding a, a stick, which I neglected to bring down here. If you hold a stick out here, the stick is going to be pointing that way and that way. So, but if you rotate it inwards, it's going to angle inwards to, like, where a bar would be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that and squeezing your pinkies and pressing your thumbs into the bar are kind of separate. You can do that no matter where your grip is. And uh, that's just a way to force your wrists and your forearms to flex if you want. Yeah. Yes. What's the best assistance exercise off of the bench that you find correlates best to the bench? Uh, for me, I like incline dumbbell press. Just you know, like in general, it, whatever one works best is the one you like the most. So if you hate incline dumbbell press and you like close grip bench, do close grip bench more, and odds are it will improve your bench. Yeah. Or, or if you want to have a bad time and you know uh, what's wrong with your bench, like where your weak point is. Like hammer your weak, like whatever variation fixes your weak point. Uh, yeah. So, how do you set up where your, your thighs are like around the bench? So, for your, um, how you were describing, like, what is it? Okay. on the bench, but it's more like. Um, we can do that during the practical part portion, but to describe it, you basically want to uh, sit like anteriorly rotate your hips back while you're laying down and then you want to like 
basically open your thighs and then hug the sides of the bench with your inner thighs and then set your feet down there and it's you'll if you do it right you'll feel it and it makes sense but uh, if you if your whole butt like like up here is touching the bench you you're you're gonna come off the bench basically yeah so you want the, this lower portion to be making contact yeah all right <clears throat> so what's a good accessory for trouble right off the chest right off the chest uh pause you got pause okay um, Okay, okay. Pause it really. Yeah. Pause it a long time and hold it and don't collapse. So, so when you pause, do you like? Do you want to just like leave it rest, like right on the chest, and not like caving, but just like leave it rest yeah. or like maintain like some tightness? You like, want tension. You want if you're doing a pause bench in competition or in training, you want to be as tight as you can at the bottom. So if you're loose at all, you're going to either collapse forward or your arch will collapse or your feet will start moving around or your shoulders will start moving around. So if anything's moving around, you're not tight enough. And you need to hold that tightness during your pause. So, yeah. All right, next question. So I have a really hard time getting my knees below my hips to get to leg drive. So should I just focus on pushing back farther or could I go out in front? That kind of takes a lot of experimentation. I wouldn't know because I'm short. So you're gonna have to take a look at like tall lifters, uh, can, you, can you think of any tall lifters that aren't fat? <laughs> Brown Martin. Yeah. Like Kristoff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you look at any tall people or like long people, see where their uh, body angles are. Yeah, your other option is to gain 50 pounds and just be wide here. Just <laughs> yeah. big glutes will raise and then you'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, try going really wide uh, with your feet. Go okay. that. Or go all the way under the bench if you can. Mm -hmm. You know, like some benches that get under and get really under, but not at all. Yeah. Yeah, try it. Okay, who wants to go first? What's that? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can do two different, different types of wrist wraps. Yeah. Uh, I'll go grab mine too. Okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I'll walk through that. Um, so this one, you'll have, you're not going to find a lot of types like this one. These are tough reps. Uh, a walker V. They're his reps. Just bench press on the guy. But you just kind of put your hand in here. Pull this part tight. And then wrap it like that. There's no thumb loop or anything. So that's, yeah, that's super nice. Um, big gangster wraps from Mark Bell. You can do the same thing with those, but a lot of people just end up wrapping their thumb through this anyway. But you can do that the same way. So where do you get those? Um, I order them just off, uh, just like look up tough wraps online. Yeah. And then these are the SPD push wraps. They have the thumb loop. You don't always have to put your thumb through the loop. I never actually do, because it's annoying because you're going to have to take it out in competition anyway. So I just kind of hold it, hold it right here. Um, put it, so you want to make sure it's up on your hand a little bit. Whenever you see like a picture of someone on the internet wrapping their wrist, they're going to put it like way down here and that's going to do nothing for you. Um, kind of put it up on your hand, make sure you wrap it really tight. Nice and slip it on my hand. Oh, I can't hold Like that. If I wrap it over, it's going to pinch. See that? 
but if I did it so it kind of lays flat there, it makes it a lot more comfortable. Um, yeah. And again, here, if you're wrapping it in front, this is going to end up, that's going to end up in front. That's going to be really annoying while you're bent. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, speed is a mess because there's a left and a right. So if you do it right, you'll always end up with your cam on top. So that's not the way. So I'll pass this one around. This is a right handed one. Yep. Uh, so just go around. Uh, quick tip. Quick pass this one. Yeah. So quick tip. Whatever position your wrist tendons are when you cast your wrist, it'll stay there. So for example, if you have your wrist completely open like that and you wrap it, It'll end up just kind of being around here, but if you hold a fist like that and you wrap it, it's going to hold all your tendons in that flex position. So right now it's pressing my thumb tendon down. So when you come and bench, your thumb will automatically just kind of be more flexed. So I can't really pull that back at all. Um, and then my hand, like my hand is completely relaxed right now and it's kind of holding my finger down. So that helps. The difference between these two, they're both the SPD ones. I have the little bit stiffer ones. It's just kind of off preference from there. Uh, this is the right one as well. Those are, those are Elite FTS ones. Those are shorter. Yeah, length and stiffness are entirely preference. You can get short and uh, stretchy ones, and you'll be able to cock your wrist back. What was your name again? Joel. Joel, there you go. Yeah, so try it with, uh, hold the tab with your thumb, and then once you un like release your hand, you're going to want that up on your wrist a little bit more. Yeah. This one? Yep. Yeah, you want it, want it like right at your thumb line. Yeah. You want it as high up as you can get it without actually touching the bar. Your bar's going to be. So, yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit higher than that one. Yeah. That one's kind of a preference thing. The higher up, the less you'll be able to move your wrist. Yeah. And um, also, if you have a long one and you cast it crisscross, so you kind of go at an angle back and forth, that's also a preference if you have a super long wrist wrap. I like to go as high up as I can and wrap it completely on top of itself. Yeah. And I think that works better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can go kind of like cross it here. So good options are who who doesn't have for straps? I think we all. Have. What are some good options for new ones? New ones, SBDs are like literally the best. Uh, they're forty five dollars. Um, these ones are like. 35. Yeah. They, um, so they're not IPF approved. They would want to go to nationals or worlds or anything. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Anything Inzer is going to be approved, and uh, they're also like the cheapest, easy option. They're 20 bucks, and they're like pretty good, but they only come in uh, like a left side, so you're just going to have to deal with like, having a tap in the front. I mean, if that feels comfortable for you, that's fine, but uh, I mean, I wouldn't mind. Like, but right there. Yeah. 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 yeah, like you said, it's kind of a preference. Yeah. You don't even have to wear them. Right. If you don't like them, don't wear them. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of gets in the way sometimes. I kind of like to. Yeah. yeah. I just really like to. Oh. I think it makes it so, let's go through some setup stuff, everyone. Let's go first. Tall guy goes first.
feet know exactly where I want them to start. Then I lay back, retract my back, take my traps in. So from there, grab the size of the power rack. Uh, so like, invert your hands. So press as like you're doing OHP or yell. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. So then flex your quads, lift your butt up, and retract your shoulder blades. Uh, scoop back on the bench a little bit. Uh, your head should still be on, but yeah, so. That looks about good for me. Yeah, yeah, you're like really long. Uh, yeah, you're gonna get a grab a wider. Way wider? Way wider. Uh, go like the pointer finger. This is max, right? Yeah, so that, yeah that's max. That's a little bit lower. Yeah. Yeah, your arms are still. This guy's just tall. And he's just too long. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this kind of around the bar to your racket. So, when you unrack it, do your best to uh, kind of don't lift up with your shoulder. Just kind of pull just like down. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna basically drag it out of the rack, and you'll feel you'll feel the uh, band tension. This is, this is going to keep your lats a little bit more. You'll feel your lats. Yeah. Did you feel your lats contracting? Yeah. Yeah. So, you should feel that in the middle. So, yeah. Um, let's work on your feet. Your foot stance. Alright. So, set up. Try and go super wide with your legs. So, let's say, uh, Point your toes straight forward. Point your toes straight forward. And go wide with the feet. Sean, you want to take that forward? Forward. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So. Let's see if that goes with you. That's my bad. So, yeah, 
And you wanted to know how to grab it. Yeah. yeah. So get your butt as close to your shoulders as you can. And then sit. Can you feel the bench with your ear in your thigh? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sit. Yeah, you should be fine just like that. Just sit and set your butt down and flat your feet. It makes more sense uh, in the competition because the ERX have like a million places to grab them everywhere. Um, so, yeah, who's next? Okay, Mark. We want your feet to go last. Do Just don't get Try slivers. Yeah. Try not to get slivers. Yeah. <laughs> How does it hurt your wrists? Does it press 
not something other than this. And then it shoots this one. Okay. So Maybe you try wearing your snaps. Yeah, you can try You can try internally, internally rotate your whole hand for a dagger. So you want to make contact with the inside there. And then go from try, try and get all the way, not into, into your thumb webbing, but like on the outside of your hand, try to put the weight into the So, yeah, try that. And uh, try benching. Don't kind of flex your wrists. Like, just kind of squeeze your hand, and, like kind of pull back a little bit. Like, grab it. Uh, grab it with your full hand. Yeah, and then the toilet rotate. And uh, your wrist like that. Yeah, there you go. That's what you want. I like doing that. Okay. So try to unrack. Flex your lats. And then come down. Uh, okay. Come. Lift your chest up as high as you can. Put your shoulder legs. Yeah, so you, you, uh, you pinch your shoulder blades together. Pinch them harder. Yeah. I got my shoulder trap. Yeah, it's it's still going. Um, it's at twenty two twenty seven. Yeah. Weird. Still it stopped at twenty two.
I'm just going to show this because I have a really weird bench set up that I want to be able to just look. Yeah, that looks better. So then we just said, yeah, that looks better. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is slapping people in the face for that. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, read the PowerPoint. Uh, there's some tidbits. Changes your bar path too. And, uh, it's 
access the way it feels. So you will need to get used to it if you're really like a fast you have to figure it out. But uh this the crash. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the easiest way I can get people to arch and like get tight properly. There's a million different ways, like James had his uh, feet up. You could grab the bar and kind of lift yourself up. You could grab the bar and swing yourself up. Uh, kind of show the swing. A lot of people will start behind, especially if they like start with their feet where they keep them. Then they'll like, obviously this thing isn't here, but they'll like swing themselves underneath you like you saw in Ken's picture on the yeah. presentation there, and then they'll go back down. down. Yeah. Or the most ridiculous ones are like stay on their head like this. Yep. I yeah. find that's just more show than yeah. actuality. Yeah, the, the payoff for doing ridiculous stuff, it's like diminishes the more ridiculous it is. <laughs> yeah. And normally I would put my feet, like, I would have my Ollie shoes on, I guess. And I might be one pair up here since that's weird. So, if you are super extra tight in the in your back and your legs and everything, and uh, you're using all your muscles, and you're pretending the bar is like 200 pounds, for me the bar doesn't even touch my chest. I get to about here, and to me that feels like it's bottoming out just because of how tight I am. I also maybe have really tight pecs from not stretching them, but you know. Yeah, so if you get a feel for that, if you're like doing the bar this far off and you pretend that's your bottom point, that's going to carry over to when you go heavy. So you won't feel like, like if you go heavy and uh, you expect this to be your stopping point, the extra weight will just bring it down to your chest. So if you train like that, you'll end up having a really efficient soft touch. So there's like the heave bench and then there's soft touch. I taught you all the soft touch where you don't sink at all uh, because that usually works for your average person because sinking is... Sinking only really works if you're like at 300 pounds in fat and have an enormous belly because at that point you can use the elasticity of your enormous pot belly to blast it off your chest. So if you watch, there's a guy named Chad Schroeder from Minnesota, he's a big boy, and he kind of does the, uh, the sinking press, where he doesn't necessarily go super wide and touch soft. He goes kind of medium grip and sinks it, because you can do that. You can't, you can't heave it, so you can't touch. Get the press command, sink it, then press. You can sink all the way, and then that's your pause, like kind of depressed in your chest, 
and then press off of there. And that doing it that way lets you use more leg drive, but you also have the trade-off of you need to be very, very retracted and tight no matter what anyway. And you have to like have that trade-off. It works for some people. In general, it's the heavier people that it works better for. So yeah, fun fact of the day. If you ever become fat, you have permission to uh, do that. So yeah. Uh, any other questions, information, things? So obviously it's good, it's easy to practice yourself and it's like how would you recommend I know for me, like I can have a great setup in more ways and more ways that actually matter, which is also part of how do you make that be stronger. Be stronger. <laughs> Um, it comes down to all your stabilizing muscles, and you have to you, you want to be treating your lightweights as if they were heavy. So don't be lazy about 135. Don't be lazy about the bar. Treat it like it's heavy, and treat it like you want to move every warm up set. Like you want to blast it as fast as you can, with as efficiently as you can. So if, if you, when you saw me do the uh, me and Zach. The, the bar, really efficient, got down to the touch and pressed it pretty quick. You want to treat it like that. You don't want to be lazy about it. Um, even if you're doing like 70% for like your rep work, you really want to super tight, touch as efficiently as you can, don't sink, soft touch, and then press with as efficient of a bar path as you can. So like in the power point, we saw that green line, up and then forward. So I'll focus on that, and that will eventually carry over to your one rep max. When you press to that, you're going to have this very ingrained, speedy, here, very tight, press back, very efficient. So yeah, the more you press, like, your rep work matters for like strength and your form, so don't treat it just like you're getting a pump. If you're, like, treat it like you're practicing your one rep max over and over again, like just without like one rep, you're re racking it every time. And that, this, that's the same thing with squat and deadlift. <coughs> Treat every rep like you're practicing your one rep max. Yeah. Uh, again, with the setup, if you're having trouble like staying tight or you're getting tired of staying tight, go ahead and do some back accessories like face pulls, back pull downs, pull up stuff like that. Make it a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Oh, I totally didn't go to the arm stuff. Yeah, so back to slide one, triceps, pecs, front delts, quads, lats, biceps. You want all of those warmed up before you start benching. So if you ever see me in the gym, I'm always I'm flailing around with a bunch of bands. Because it's important. Um, you want to be priming your muscles for what you're about to do. So I'll be like blasting some tricep extensions with the band will be really fast because I want to be be able to contract my muscles as fast as possible when I'm actually benching and I also want to be bringing blood into that area if you, if you ever really try to like one rep max or squat and just go and dry like no one else does that you can do that it's kind of it's like to this, not to that extent but it's like you want your body to be ready for when you're actually doing the work because like I said your, your rep work matters just as much as one rep, one rep max matters. So yeah, I like to uh, try some extensions. I do either with the uh, cable machine or a band or just weights, I'll do bicep curls with it. Just cause once your pressing volume is high, like to like about where you can't recover from or close to that, you're gonna start having elbow problems or like you're starting like, you'll feel shittier. So you want to take the extra time to make sure your body's ready. And that you'll, you'll notice a difference, especially when you're getting close to uh, like what your body can handle. So also shoulders. Shoulder health is kind of really important in the long term. Uh, your ability to retract and press forward and control your shoulder and then be able to reach back like that I can't. I actually can't. This is as far as I can get with this. That's a problem. Uh, yeah, your ability to your uh, 
Yeah, yeah your rotator cuff, your, your sits here. The super spinatus, infra spinatus, teres minor, uh, and subscapularis. Sorry, I'm an enemy. So, but yeah, keep those healthy. Face pulls, if you can take the band, just face pulls. Uh, if you do these with the band, the, it'll keep your shoulders healthy. If you slap it in with your bench warm up, band dislocations. Yeah, band dislocations. So you can do that with a PVC too. Just go back and forth, or you can go one side at a time like that. Um, that's very handy. Definitely do it. One thing too. Um, kind of this this kind of motion right here, like um, it's basically like you're setting up with your bar. You kind of take your stance here. Just focus on like getting your back tight with the band even, and then you can bring it into your chest. Yeah. Just kind of going through the motion of the bench. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, that's really important. Yeah. yeah, the rec ball only has one set of every color, but that should be fine for most bench activities. You can like start with the light one, and you can even work up to like the fat, the, the fat blue one. We'll just take one side and just retract and hold that, and that'll give you a feel for having your mid back retracted and tight. If you don't have a sense of that, so yeah. Lats. Also warm up your lats. Uh, they. This is like going along with the biceps thing. Warm up your stabilizing muscles before you bench because if they're not warm and they're not activated, you won't be able to, you won't be able to use them as much. So it's pretty easy to just go do a quick like lat pull down for like a set of ten, and like even just that, you'll get a feel for where your lat is, and it'll like inflate it enough where you can, you can feel it when you press in your touch back here. Uh, if you guys want to bench, you can bench. We have 600 pounds of weights. We have infinite time, so let's do the work at it. Thanks. I mean, kind of sad that not many people came. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. a crowd. Of yeah, right. Yeah, it's not a big one. Yeah. And I've taught you how to bench. I've taught you how to bench. Zach knows what he's doing. He doesn't bench. All he does is deadlift. Yeah, you guys got some stuff out of it.